Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Medical Assistant with Miss K. If this is your first time visiting, welcome. Today, I'm going to be going over medi medications, um, medication classifications, and some examples. Now, and if you missed part one, um, I will link that somewhere along with this video down below. I went over different medication uh, classifications that you'll need to know if you are studying for certification. I know some nurses watch my channel as well. So even if you're a nurse, um, it, that can be helpful for you as well, because you definitely also need to be aware of different medication classifications. But um, specifically when it uh, particularly when it comes to medical assistance certification exams, you do need to be familiar with classifications. So in this video, I'm not going to go deep into classifications like I did in the last video. I'm just going to go over. We're going to reiterate a couple of things and then we're just going to go over some common medications, the generic as well as the brand names. For those that don't know me, I'm a medical assistant instructor. My name is Kendra, aka Miss K. I help medical assistants and future medical assistants pass certification. So I have an online study guide. It's called MA Refresher Course. And I have a clinical version and an administrative version. The clinical version is for anybody that's studying for clinical exams like the CCMA, the RMA, or the CMA, AMA. It does include both clinical and administrative content. So you get two in one. If you only need the administrative portion, that will be the one you would choose here. In each, um, in both, I have different lessons. I have slide lessons that I'm teaching from. And then there are quizzes. So this video here just shows you like a, a quick overview of how it looks. It's 12 modules all together. In each module, I'm teaching the lesson. And then you have a quiz at the end of each lesson. And then at the end of the course, you have um, practice tests, okay? So it's to prepare you for certification. Or if you just need a refresher, if you've been out of school for a while and you just need a refresher, this is also for you as well, okay? So let's get into this lesson. Um, so we did go over this in the last lesson. I just want to reiterate, therapeutic use is what a medication treats, okay? For an example, lowers blood pressure or you know, the use may be hypertension. It's used to treat hypertension. The action is what it does in a body. So that's what the mechanism of action does. So we said therapeutic use, an example would be hypertension. The mechanism of action may be, you know, relaxing blood vessels. Okay. This is how it lowers the blood pressure. And then when it comes to legal class, this refers to whether it's a prescription, whether it's over the counter or a controlled substance. We did go over this in the last video, but we just need to make sure we reiterate generic name of a medication refers to the official name. An example will be ibuprofen, uh, ibuprofen, sorry, or acetaminophen. The trade name for ibuprofen could be Advil or Motrin. Now, those are the names that you see on a commercial. Those are branded trademark names. And then uh, another example of a generic will be acetaminophen, or I mentioned that and then the trade name for acetaminophen is Tylenol. Chemical name is a scientific makeup. That's what the drug is made up of. It describes the structure of the drug. Plavix. Plavix, uh, the generic for Plavix is Colpida group. The classification is antiplatelet. The action, it inhibits platelet aggregation, or aggregation just means forming the forming of platelets. It's a blood thinner. The use is to prevent stroke and myocardial infarction or heart attack. Coumadin, the pronunciation of the generic of Coumadin is warfarin. Now, looking at the pronunciation, it probably looks like war far in, right? But it's warfarin. Classification is anticoagulant, blood thinner. Action, it inhibits clotting factor syn synthesis. Okay, so it prevents blood clotting. The use is to prevent and treat blood clots. Eliquis, also a blood thinner. The generic for Eliquis is a Pixaban, okay? Make sure you guys are really looking at the pronunciation of these medications to make sure you're pronouncing them correctly. So a Pixaban. Classification, anticoagulant. Action, it inhibits factor XA, which is the uh, enzyme that um, that's involved in blood clotting. The use is stroke prevention in patients with atrial fibrillation. Vibromycin, the pronunciation of the generic for um, vibromycin is doxycycline. Doxycycline, notice that pronunciation. 
classification is tetracycline antibiotic. And you'll notice that there are different types of antibiotics. We know antibiotics are used to treat bacteria, but the way that each antibiotic works in the body is different. So that's why you'll notice you'll see like tetracycline antibiotics, um, penicillin antibiotics, and you'll see multiple um, types of antibiotics on the next few slides. Uh, the action, it inhibits the growth and spread of bacteria. The use is bacterial infections. Amoxil is the next medication. The generic is amoxicillin. Notice the pronunciation. You're, most of you are probably very familiar with this antibiotic. Um, it is a penicillin, penicillin antibiotic. It prevents the, the action. It prevents bacteria from creating a stable cell wall. So without the stable cell wall, it, that bacteria cannot grow. Um, use bacterial infections. Another antibiotic. Zithromax, okay, that's the brand. The generics of Zithromax is azithromycin. Classification is a microlad antibiotic. Microlad antibiotic. Notice I say we're going to see different types of antibiotics and the way that they, the mechanism of um, of the action is what's different with each antibiotic. Um, it inhibits the growth and spread of bacteria, the use of respiratory, ear, and skin infections. Ceph, um, so, well, let me say the brand name first, Keflex. The generic of Keflex is uh, cephalexin. Classification is a cephalosporin antibiotic. It disrupts bacterial cell wall synthesis. That's the action. Um, or prevents, you know, the spread and growth of bacteria. The use is for skin and urinary tract infections. Another antibiotic, we have Cipro. Um, ciprofloxacin is the generic classification for quinolone antibiotic. Um, the action, it inhibits the bacterial enzyme, the GNA, I'm sorry, GNA, <laughs> DNA gyrase. The use is urinary, GI, and respiratory infections. Oh, look at this big long name, right? Looks intimidating. This is why pronunciation is so important. Once you learn how to pronounce certain words, it won't be as, it won't look as intimidating, okay? So Bactrim is the brand name. Um, and then we have Trimethoprim, okay? And then we have Sofa Methoxazo. Sofa Meth, and let's look at this. Sofa, notice that Sofa is telling you, showing you how to pronounce it, Methoxazo, Okay. Classification is sulfonamide antibiotic. It inhibits folic acid synthesis in bacteria. The use is UTIs, bronchitis, and some pneumonias. Microbid, microbid, another antibiotic, um, nitrofurantoin is the generic. Classification is a nitrofurin antibiotic. The action, it damages bacterial DNA. The use is UTIs, urinary tract infections. Uh, Flomax. Flomax is the next medication. The generic is Tamsulosin. Classification is alpha blocker. The action, it relaxes smooth muscle and prostate and bladder necks. And it's used for benign prostatic hyperplasia or BPH um, or enlarged prostate, simply put. Uh, Proscar, Proscar, the generic for Proscar is finasteride. The classification, 5-alpha reductase inhibitor. The action, it decreases prostate size by blocking hormone conversion. It's used for BPH and male pattern hair loss. Zantac, Zantac, the pronunciation for the generic is ranitidine. Classification is an H2 blocker, um, which is a histamine um, that um, is involved with um, releasing acid into the stomach, okay? Um, the action, it blocks histamine and stomach lining, is used for GERD and ulcers. Pepsi is another H2 blocker. The generic is famotidine. The action, it inhibits histamine H2 receptors. The use is for GERD heartburn, and ulcers. Zofran. Zofran is an antiemetic. And we talked about this in the last video, but antiemetic is for nausea. Very important for you guys to know the different classifications because they may 
throw out a name on the test. Could be Zofran. They may even say Zofran. And they say, you know, it's an emetic. An emetic, what is it used for? Nausea, right? Um, um, the pronunciation of the generic is on Dastaron. I'm um, sorry, on Dast. I said on Dastaron. Sorry about that, guys. Um, on Dastaron. The action that blocks serotonin receptors in the brain is used for nausea and vomiting, especially from chemo. Hydrodiarrheal. Hydrodiarrheal's uh, generic is hydrochlorothiazide. We also call this HCTZ for, for short. Usually when I'm documenting medications and patient on hydrochlorothiazide, most of the time we put HCTZ. Um, classification, thiazide diuretic. It promotes sodium and water excretion and is used for patients with hypertension and edema. Delta zone. The generic for delta zone is prednisone. Prednisone. See the pronunciation there. Classification is corticosteroid. The action, it reduces inflammation and suppresses immune response. Is used for allergies, arthritis, and autoimmune diseases. Madraw. The pronunciation for the generic of Madraw is methoprenicillone. Uh, we'll look at that just in case, because this, this is another one that kind of part looks long, right? But look at the pronunciation, pronunciation of it. Methoprenicillone. Classification, corticosteroid, the action, it suppresses inflammation. Use, inflammatory and allergic conditions. Singular, singular, um, in, in, in simple terms, is allergy medication. Um, pronunciation is uh, Montelukase um, or Mont... Uh, I, I notice I've been saying Montelukas. <laughs> uh, some of these medications, I'm looking at it. I'm realizing I'm the way realizing the way I've been saying it versus you know. But um, anyway, uh, Montelukas, Montelukas. I've been saying Montelukas. I guess we can say it right like that. Uh, Monte Montelukas. Um, classification: um, leukotriene receptor antagonist. It blocks leukotriene action. The use asthma and seasonal allergies. Flonase, pronunciation of the generic of flonase is fluticasone. The classification is corticosteroid. Action, it reduces inflammation in nasal passages. The use is allergic rhinitis. Trazodone, trazodone. Uh, the generic for, I'm sorry, I said um, trazodone is the brand. Trazodone is the generic. Um, Dicero is the medication. Classification is the antidepressant. The action, it increases serotonin activity. It's used for depression and insomnia. Welbutrin, the, the pronunciation of the generic for Welbutrin is bupropion. bupropion. Classification is an NDRI, antidepressant. I think we kind of went over that just a little bit Um in the last video, but um, it increases the well, that was a it was a different medication, but we did talk about it a little bit. It increases dopamine, um, which is what helps with giving us um happy feelings, right? Um, makes makes us um you know feel good, and then the uh norepinephrine um is um the hormone responsible for our um fight or flight response or to stress or danger or other threats. Use depression and smoking cessation. Uh, effects or effects or the pronunciation is relaxpacine. Uh, the um, classification is an SNRI. Um, inhibits serotonin and norepinephrine uptake, reuptake, sorry. The use is for depression and anxiety. Flexoril, the generic is cyclobenazaprine. 
The classification is a muscle relaxant and it reduces muscle spasms through central nervous system depression. It is used for acute muscle spasms. Xanaflex. The next medication is Xanaflex. Pronunciation of the generic is Tizanidine. Classification is muscle relaxant. The action is the alpha-2 adrenerg adrenergic agonist. The use is for muscle spasticity or muscle tightness and back pain. Okay, guys, so this is it for now. If you stay at the to the end, thank you for hanging with me. Um, excuse my stuffiness at the time of recording this video. I have um, not a cold. It's actually my allergies acting up. Speaking of allergy medicine, I took some allergy medicine before I started recording this video. Um, but I hope you guys found this helpful. If you did, please like the video. Don't forget, you can find my online study guide at marefreshercourse.com. Clinical version includes both clinical and administrative. And the administrative version is administrative only. So you don't have to buy both. I've had so many people buy both. And then I've had to reimburse them for the administrative when they realized they bought both of them um, by mistake. So all you need is one. You even need clinical, which includes both. Or you need administration, which is just administrative. Okay, guys. Thank you again for visiting my channel. Good luck to everybody that's preparing to go to school. That's preparing to take your certification. Good luck to all of you guys that may be looking for employment right now. Let me know down in the comments if this was helpful to you guys. Or if you found, if you came across any medications that you're very familiar with and you're like, oh, I'm, I'm familiar with that. I work in this specialty and I see this medication all the time. Or if it was brand new to you. Okay. Thank you again. Be blessed.